I love that my backyard is like the grocery store. We're gonna walk over here and I'm gonna toss them down there. And you guys watch how fast tortoises start to congregate so they eat these things. You can kind of take this stuff for the turtles and throw it in there and they'll love you for it. How cool is that, guys? Oh yeah, yeah, she's nuts. I'll just knock these down. They get a good food source. Makes the work easy. Hey, what's going on everybody? Kenyon here, hanging out. It's a beautiful afternoon and uh, the sun's starting to go down. So the tortoises are coming out. It's cooled off. And what I'm gonna do is kind of walk around the camp and I'm gonna show you guys just how fun it is to kind of work on the, the greenery out here because a lot of what I have actually feeds the tortoises. So right now we're gonna trim some of these elephant ears and I'm gonna walk you around the camp and just show you what I like to do with some of the food that's growing here at the camp. So again, we got these elephant ears right here and as they get older, they kind of wilt and they kind of fall down. But that's no problem because what I like to do is I like to cut them and then I chuck them into, oh, into the red foot tortoise enclosure. I even get a couple of healthy ones. We just want to kind of take off the ones that are kind of wilting. And when we do that, watch this. We just grab them. We're going to walk over here. And I'm going to toss them down there and you guys watch how fast tortoises start to congregate so they eat these things. Uh, this is one of the fun things you can do with your animals, with tortoises and even herbivorous lizards, is try and grow some plants that they actually eat. So check it out. They'll just start getting to work on that right there. Uh, the redfoots, they can eat this. Elephant ears are um, actually native to Asia. When I had Burmese mountain tortoises, they like to eat them. Uh, but I did notice that I couldn't keep any of these alive in the enclosure with redfoots because they do in fact eat them, stalks, the leaves, everything. Over there, there's a little guy, it's got some type of plant, I don't exactly know what it is. I think it's actually part of the, the what are they called? What are those called? I'm drawing the total blank. Oh my God. Oh man, somebody. This is crazy. I'm actually, I think this is where I've lost my mind. They are a... After much mental anguish, they're called bromeliads. Oh my God, I can't believe. Sometimes your just brain just shuts off. Anyway, these guys have been chowing down. As you can see, I've got more of a crew hanging out with me now. Let's go get these guys some more food. Um, I like to just kind of walk around and make sure that they're eating. So we'll just keep on cutting away some of these, just like this. Oh, that looks good there. Actually, I also like to pull some of these right out of the ground because they compete with some of the other plants. But the good news is, is that they become more food for the critters. Throw those over there. And they will absolutely find them because there are plenty more tortoises looking to eat. So we'll go ahead and let that happen. Pretty good. Uh, say hello to some of these guys. Now the other cool thing is, with all the trimming that I do kind of around the place, um, their lizards actually like to eat stuff. So let's find something that the lizards like to eat. How about mulberry leaves? You see this? I planted this mulberry tree a long time ago in another area and it didn't really like it. But now, as you can see, it's been growing. I actually trimmed it down a little while ago. So I'm just going to peel off some of the, some of the leaves here. Now this is a fantastic plant. If you guys can plant the mulberry tree, you're going to be able to get a little bit of fruit. You're also gonna get these big leaves and these leaves are great for iguanas, the monkey tailed skinks, uh, the tortoises. This is just a really good food for all, for all these herbivores because this leaf is very nutritious. So let's see if we can get some of these blue iguanas. Here he comes right here, Mr. Blue. All right, I believe that's Hunter. Let's see, he already sees the uh, he already sees the plant. Let's open it up. Come here, look. Let's see if he's in the mood to eat it. He's still a little wary of me, but he's going to eat it. 
That's my finger. You want to eat the leaf. What a silly guy. What about you, young lady? She gets nervous. You going to eat it? Come on. Come on. Oh, she just gave me a little sneeze. They are still so shy. My gosh, come on. Come on. So funny, you guys think I might be uh, lying to you about how they like to eat it, but they do. Put that there. Sometimes what they like is if you kind of rip it and the Come on. There you go. Takes a little bit, but once they get the taste of it and they know it's food, oh, what are you chasing her around for? What a jerk. Will you be a nice guy, huh? There, just go to town on that and she'll calm down and then hopefully he'll let her eat some too. Where are you going? You know what? I'm gonna bring this to someone else who I know will eat it because I want you guys to see this. I can't help it, folks. Finicky lizards, man. They're a trip. But before we do that, let's go over here and just make sure that I don't have any more elephant ears that don't need to be trimmed down. The snakes are doing good, Peter and Colin. But over here, wow, look at this. Let's go ahead and trim out some more of these and we'll go ahead and throw it into the pond where the pond turtles will actually enjoy that food as well. And this is a huge, oh, that's a, such a huge leaf. Oh. So I wind up killing two birds with one stone. I get some yard work done and I actually get to feed my animals a bit of a treat. And the cool thing about that is that it's natural food and it's always really, really good for them. So it's something that if you guys live somewhere, even if you can garden your own food, you can kind of take this stuff for the tortoises and turtles and uh, throw it in there and they'll love you for it. It's just such a good little meal. Look at these guys go. Look at that little tree frog swimming away. Sorry, buddy, I kind of got rid of his little home. But as you can see, the cooters and the Asian pond turtles, they just love this stuff. Hey, little lady. So it's so cool to see them kind of doing their thing. I love how these giant Asian wood turtles actually use their claws. Watch this. They're going to push and rip and just tear those stalks. They are really going to go to town on this food. And I love the sounds. Look at this. They are awesome. So this is a really fun way to feed your animals and keep them happy. It also is a bit enriching because they have to use more of those uh, more of their behavior, especially these giant Asian pond turtles. I mean, they're incredible. I love those guys. They may not be the most colorful turtles, but they're big, they're personable, and they are hardy. So, all right, guys, let's keep moving around. We are still going here. This is awesome. I love it. Oh, I, I forgot I have that mulberry leaf. We're going to go pluck another one, a much greener one, if you will, for our next couple of animals. We're back at the mulberry tree. Oh, let's go ahead. All right. So we got the red foots eating. We got the pond turtle snacking. Um, now let's give some of this mulberry leaf. You can see how certain tortoises are going to love it. Certain lizards are going to love it. So we're going to go ahead and show it off right here with some of these leopard tortoises. Let's get these guys. These guys, once I start walking around over here, they get real excited. How about we get this? little lady right here a little bit of that come on come out of your shell don't be shy How 
cool is that guys once she realized that it was food no big deal and then of course here comes one of the males heading over oh no here's my other male he's gonna attack this mulberry oh yeah not too long get right on it very cool and those beaks are real sharp they can get right through that leaf no problem i'm gonna save this one for a lizard so okay everyone's gonna walk over and devour these pretty cool man i love that my backyard is like the grocery store so if i'm not really or if i haven't gone out and gotten produce this is probably better than that to be perfectly honest because the lizards do in fact uh, and the tortoises do love to eat these natural foods. Okay, let's see if we can get Crazy Sophia to eat a mulberry leaf. Now this lizard is nuts. She'll bite my toes. I mean, she's a loon and I gotta make sure this airlock is shut. Here we go. Watch this. Here she comes. She's gonna push open the door. Hey, what's up lady? You want some of this? Oh yeah, yeah, she's nuts. She is a loony tune. Look at her go. You eat that. Here, come on, bud. You want some there? Come on, stumps. Stump. Go. On. Yeah, there you go. Oh, boy. She gonna jump on me? You gonna jump? Ah, no, don't jump on the camera. I need to get these guys to calm down a little bit. Well, Stumpy's okay. It's this girl here. She is a wacko. Ah, you really gotta be on your toes. Get it? To not get bit by these two when they come charging out the door. Hey, are you gonna jump on me? Come on, man. Don't do it. For whatever reason, these guys are just nuts. I love Stumpy. How cool is this guy? He's really beautiful. Even you got that little Stumpy tail. All right, good deal. Oh, that's my finger. Try not to eat the finger, kid. I love how she's like nervous, but that wanting to eat overrides everything. We'll give the rest to you, Stumps. You see how they grab and then watch. I'm gonna hold this stalk and they'll just shear it right off. Good job, guys. There's your little treat. And I'll see you guys tomorrow for a proper feed. Today's just, like I said, today's just a little snack for these guys. So uh, we've accomplished that. But I just wanted to show you. So, so far we've fed off some elephant ear. We fed off some mulberry leaves. And now I wanna show you another type of uh, plant that I grow here. You might notice it kind of uh, in a lot of the videos. A lot of you ask me where you can get it. Here in Florida, we get it. Um, I've found patches of it and they grow um, all over. It's spineless cactus. Um, you may want to try local um, Latin supermarkets. Uh, they do sell it. People eat it. It's actually really good for you if uh, properly uh, prepared. Uh, it's good for digestion. And uh, right now, I'm gonna cut some of it up. We're gonna go ahead, I'm gonna pull off some of these pads. Uh, also, I'm gonna get some of those banana leaves because those turn out to be a really good treat as well for some of the big tortoises like our Darwin and uh, Socrates and the like. So I'm gonna go ahead and chop these down. Here are the radiators. Now notice how any of these that are on the ground are kind of chopped. See that, look at that. All right, so what I like to do is I'll hook them up. I'll just knock these down. Oh, there we go. And these guys will eat this. Remember guys, this is actually easier to do if you have two hands free. But I'll go ahead and just do that. And then the tortoises are gonna go ahead. Here, the tortoises are gonna go ahead and start chomping it. Look at that, look at that. Is that funny? They, oh, there you go. They got a pretty good life here. Just knock it down a little and they'll just chomp. So this is a really cool way that these animals will get enrichment, they get exercise, they get a good food source, and uh, it's a lot of, it's a lot, of, makes the work easy, if that makes sense. All right, what I'm gonna do, guys, I'm gonna put you down, and I'm gonna chop some of this stuff up. I'm gonna cut it down, and I'm gonna go ahead and pick this back up so that uh, we can feed off some of it and you guys can continue to watch kind of what I do during some of my weekend uh, excursions in the backyard. How about some banana leaves? We'll go ahead and take these banana leaves right on over to the Galops and Aldabratoris. They love them. Look, there's Socrates right there. So, 
Oh, look, there's Darwin. Come on, kids. All right, there she is having a soak. Look at that. And trust me, this is going to get good. You guys have a look at these guys eating while I go back and I'm going to go ahead and cut up some more cactus and I'll be right back. So enjoy this, will you? Ah, I think I hear, I think I hear Nostradamus coming along. I'm back, by the way. Uh, these guys seem to be enjoying their meal. Look at how Darwin just swallows this thing whole. My goodness, that's awesome. What a good girl. So the banana leaves, oh, they've been eating for a long time. They love it. And uh, I'll give them banana from time to time, but these leaves are really what they love. And she just kind of eats it like a bit of spaghetti. She just swallows it all down. Go on, girl. Oh, she's going to. Get rid of my hand there with a front paw, claw action. Oh, I can hear, I can hear Nostradamus coming. What do you say, I'll show you what I've been up to over here. I went ahead and I cut down a bunch of this stuff, but I wanna show you. The radiated tortoises seem to have congregated. They're smart, they see me come over here. They know that there's manna from heaven falling down and these guys just go for it. So there's a few that I leave down on the ground so that will kick in the foraging instincts of these tortoises because so many times, guys, you've heard me talk about tortoises and feeding them in captivity. What happens is we tend to overfeed our animals in captivity. They're eating produce and chows and things like that that are so full of nutrients that you can make these tortoises obese and it's usually not a good situation. What's going on, kiddo? You looking at me? food's back there uh, so what I like to do is keep my animals again I, I'm able to do this I'm able to keep them outside and what it does is it allows them to move they got to walk around they got to walk around and they've got to look for their food they've got all sorts of grasses to eat so these tortoises only get supplemental feedings probably two to three times a week the rest of the time I let them just kind of forage and uh, use their skills as foragers to get the food so uh, that's what they're doing right now. I kind of leave this up. They're going to eat what they want, and then they're going to go ahead. And uh, once they're full, they'll move on. But this is a really cool treat that I like to give them. Uh, the other thing I'm hearing, back over here by the Galops and the Aldabra, is I do, in fact, think I hear Nostradamus. Let's see. Oh, yes. Come on, Nas. You know you love your banana leaves. Let's give them one. This guy is so cool, man. I love this tortoise. Look at this. Come on, buddy. Get yourself some, oh yeah. Here we go, no worries. Get in there. Do you want a head scratch or do you want to eat? Now, Nostradamus I had since 2004. In August, I got him. He's now about 150 pounds. He is a male, he showed me. Uh, he. Uh, usually they got to be about 200 pounds before you can tell just by looking but I got lucky and he showed me that he was a boy by averting his penis uh, out of his cloaca so he did that about four years ago so I knew hey that's a dude anyhow it's harder to get the males than it is females of giant tortoises um, I'm not exactly sure why I think because when we incubated them years ago they were incubated uh, for females so we didn't get a lot of male 
uh, reproduction or T uh, male temperature sex determination. Um, so here we go. Look at Darwin just charging in on this. You better get to work there, Nas. My goodness. Come on, buddy. There you go. And so this is a really good way for me to make sure they have a varied diet. They'll get banana leaves, they'll get cactus, they'll get different weeds that they kind of walk around through the thicket uh, during the summer. They'll eat all the grapevine that kind of pops up. So these guys really do have a fantastic life uh, as far as being able to act as naturally as possible. And something that I recommend when you are going to take on the housing of large tortoise species, they really need to move. They really need to have a good diet in order to keep them healthy. Now, knock on wood, these guys have been very, very healthy for me. Uh, Darwin, when I got her, she had the beginning of a swelling underneath her neck that a lot of galops get. And they uh, think that's because of diet. Uh, although there have been some that got it and their diet's good. Well, she had beginnings of the swelling and she was quite overweight. But once I got her here and just got her on a more natural diet with a lot of exercise, hey buddy, with a lot of exercise, that swelling in her neck kind of went down. So she does not seem to have any problems. She looks happy as ever. And uh, of course, Nostradamus loves getting scratched. I love that tortoise. You're a good boy, huh? It's just such a good guy. Look at him standing up like that. Is that amazing? Look at how he's perched on the rock. Pretty cool. I'm going to let him get the business. Meanwhile, she's taking her meal, Socrates, in the tub. Very good. Okay, I'm going to throw some uh, cactus out here for them, and then we're going to move on, and we'll feed those sulcatas some cactus. Let's get these guys set up. Just a little treat. A little treat of cactus, because they have so much of those leaves. So we'll just go do this. And again, that's going to give them some hydration. It's going to help with digestion. And that's really uh, what we're hoping to do with these critters. Okay, very good. Let's move it right along. I just love this kind of stuff, man. I like being outside. I like to um, always visit with the animals. You know, I go on and on about it, making sure that you spend time with your animals to just kind of observe them and make sure they're behaving correctly that they're moving correctly. It's so important to their overall husbandry that we do that. Okay, so I'll give you an update on Hercules as well. Hercules, more than any other tortoise, when introducing a male to a herd, I gotta tell you, Hercules is just awesome. No fighting, no drama. Uh, he's been breeding everyone. It's been just an incredible introduction. Oh, for this guy, oh my gosh. I'm gonna throw it on the wood tends to be a little bit better for them when they're eating off the wood. I'm trying to minimize any ingestion of sand or anything like that. Let's go ahead and put it out there. They're just gonna love this, man. This is so cool. Come on, guys and girls. Come and get it. And you'll start to see, they'll uh, start pouring out of the house and they'll start coming out of those thickets right over there as well. And let's see Hercules. Here he comes. Hercules is the new man. Oh no, that's Brutus. I'm sorry. Hi Brutus. How you doing? He's doing real well too. No fights. I can't believe this. Um, I think Hercules was just happy to not be alone anymore. Whereas on the flip side, Lumps seems to be happy to be on his own. There's Hercules right there. So he's doing well. Come on, Hercs. Come get you some. Get you some of that good cactus, buddy. All right, man. Let's do it. Again, best time of the evening. I love it. It's uh, just before the sun goes down. The tortoises are super active and they're super happy because it's that Goldilocks hour, right? Remember that word that I've used in past videos? It's called crepuscular. And a lot of my tortoises are in fact crepuscular. And that means that they're active during dawn and dusk. And that's because the temperatures, the ambient temperatures have cooled off enough that these cold blooded desert dwelling reptiles can come out and move around and be active uh, and not have to worry. So a uh, very good time for them right now to come out and be tortoises. So I like to feed them at this time. And the plus is it's not so hot for me as well, which is good. I love it. Okay, well, let's just get the rest of this cactus out. And you guys can kind of see, we still have some more tortoises that need to come out. They'll smell that cactus, they'll come running. And the cool thing is, is what they don't finish today, this stuff doesn't really spoil fast. 
Uh, it just kind of hangs out because it's a desert, it's a desert plant itself and it lasts. So uh, very good stuff. I love it. And if you guys can find it, like I said, in Latin supermarkets, things like that, you'll be able to grow it on your own. All you got to do literally is just take the pad, stick it in the ground, make sure it's got water and sunlight. And the next thing you know, you'll get little buds growing off of it. And then you'll have a whole new cactus plant growing out of it. So that's how I got it going. And uh, I just years and years ago started planting it all over my yard. And it's been one of the lifesavers of owning as many reptiles that feed on plants because like I said, I don't know how many times already in this video, it's just loaded with nutrients for them. Uh, great for digestion and hydration. And there's my big gal. Come on, girl, get you. There she goes. I got to tell you, I love the sulcatas. One of the most impressive tortoise species out there, even if it is one of the most uh, common. But if you know what you're doing and you got the room, boy, are they a rewarding species. They are just so fun and hearty and uh, personable and gosh man just a good time Whew, okay well we did it we fed everybody i hope you guys enjoyed it i had fun hanging around with you we did some gardening and we fed some tortoises uh but most importantly we got to spend time with our animals and that's really cool hope you guys learned something today another video for you i like to get these videos out that inform and educate as well as entertain uh look forward to some fun videos coming up i am actually gonna go mobile uh we're gonna get out and about and i'm gonna go meet some really cool reptile people i'm gonna bring it to you so i hope you guys will enjoy that thank you so much the channel's been kicking butt because of you you guys enjoy learning about reptiles and i'm just so uh humbled that you guys take the time to just kind of hang out with me for a little while thanks guys we'll talk to you soon see ya